All right, everyone, here we go with binomial probabilities. Uh, we have a scenario here, a quality control inspector randomly inspects four microchips in every 100. If one or more microchips are defective, the entire lot is rejected for the shipment. So I know that the probability of being defective is equal to 0.1, and being acceptable is 0.9. Now, this is a binomial scenario because these three conditions are met. I have a success or failure, which means it's either defective or it's not defective. There's a fixed number of trials, meaning I'm going to look at four microchips. I'm not, not, I'm not going to keep on going until I find one defective. I'm going to look at only four. And from time to time, the probabilities do not change. Well, let's put a restriction on here. Let's say the quality control inspector grabs a microchip, looks at it, inspects it, throws it in the pile, randomly mixes them up again, picks it again, does that four times. Then the probabilities do not change. So let's consider those three scenarios that he's going to do. He's going to look and then see if it's good or not. So we want to find out if uh, exactly having three defective microchips. So I know I'm going to look at four of them, and I want three of them to be defective. So four choose three. Well, the probability of being defective is 0.1 to the power of three, and acceptable is 0.9 to the power of one. And so I could throw this in my calculator, or I could use what's called binomial CDF. Now if I look at my calculator screen here, if I pull it over, I can see that binomial, I can use binomial PDF, the P because it's the specific scenario, it's not cumulative, it's specific. This is my N, this is my probability, and this is how many successes I want to have. And so the probability is 0 0.0036. And this is the probability of exactly three defective. Which makes sense because in a group of 100, I wouldn't, with 10 being defective, I wouldn't expect to find exactly three. The second scenario refers to the lot being rejected. Well, it says if one or more of the microchips are defective, then it'll be thrown away. So that's, I know I have the probability of zero, or I could have one microchip defective, or two, or three, or four defective. These are all the possibilities. They are mutually exclusive events. And so those probabilities add up to one. <coughs> For the lot to be rejected, I'm going to have one or more. So that means all these probabilities added up. Now, my calculator doesn't add the left side of that equation, the right side of that equation very well. It only does the left side. The calculator can do this side. So another option I can do I want the probability of at least one defective, which means the same as one minus the probability of zero defective. And so if I use this scenario, If I look at this, I can decide, I can go now to my calculator and go, well, this is going to be 1 minus 4 choose 0. The probability of being effective is 0.1 to the power of 0. Probability of being acceptable is 0.9. Put that to the power of 4. And I can do this calculation. Using my calculator, I'm going to go to VARS and go up to binomial. Oh, oh I went over a little bit. There we go. Binomial PDF. And I'll pause here for a moment. The difference between PDF and CDF, PDF looks for one value where a CDF looks for cumulative, and it goes from the left-hand side all the way up to the value you want. So from zero, if I wanted two, it would go zero, one, and two, it would add them all up. But I only want zero, so we're gonna do PDF. 
And I know I have four trials. The probability of success is 0.1. And I want zero. And I'm gonna enter that. And I go one minus that answer. And I end up, oh. So let me subtract one and I end up with 34 equals negative point three four four. So the probability that the shipment is rejected is 34.4%.